If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. We will notice in this question that we have two collisions, one between object one and two, and then the next collision between objects two and three. And we also note that three very special conditions are satisfied in this question. Number one, the collisions are stated to be elastic. Number two, the targets of these collisions are stationary. And finally, number three, these collisions are occurring in one dimension. And it turns out that when these three conditions are satisfied, we can use the conservation of momentum as well as the conservation of kinetic energy to come up with the following equation. And in this equation, we can see that the final velocity of the second object is going to equal twice the mass of the first object divided by the total mass of the objects times the initial velocity of that first object. So for example, for the collision between block one and block two, we can use this equation to determine the final velocity of block two. And to do that, we'll go ahead and plug in the given values. Now, the value of mass one isn't actually stated, so we have to leave that as the variable m1. And then for m2, we were told that that is equal to half the value of m1. So we're going to be plugging in 0.5 m1 in there. And then we'll multiply that by the initial velocity of block one, which was stated to be four meters per second. In the denominator, we can combine the terms to make 1.5 m1. And then we'll see that the m1 in the numerator will cancel with the m1 in the denominator. And of course, we're still multiplying by four meters per second. And if we go ahead and pick up our calculators, we can see that the value for the final velocity of block two is 16 thirds meters per second. So this is how fast block two is moving after it collides with block one. And now block two is gonna head over and collide with block three. What you wanna notice is that the final velocity from the first collision for block number two becomes block number two's initial velocity for the next collision. In other words, we can state that V2i is equal to 16 thirds meters per second. And this is going to be true for the second collision between blocks two and three. Now that second collision as noted satisfies the three important conditions. So we can say that the final velocity of block three is going to equal twice the value of M2 divided by the total mass times the initial velocity of block two. Now similarly, we don't actually have values for the masses, but it turns out it won't matter. So we'll just keep M2 the same. And then we can see that M3 is half the value of M2. So very similar to the first part of the question. And then we're multiplying by the initial velocity of block two, which we stated was 16 thirds meters per second. We can simplify the denominator very similarly. We're gonna have 1.5 M2, and those M2s will cancel out. And then we can pick up our calculators and compute this. And we get roughly 64 ninths meters per second, which works out to be about 7.11 meters per second. And so this turns out to be the correct answer to part A, which was asking for the speed of block three. And for part B, we were asked, is the speed of block three greater, less than, or equal to the initial speed of block one? And we can see that the speed of block three, which was 7.11 meters per second, is clearly larger than the initial speed of block one. So the correct answer to part B will certainly be greater. And now to part C, where we're looking at the kinetic energy of block three, and the kinetic energy of block three, its final value, would be one half times the mass of block three times its final velocity squared. We were told that the mass of block three is half of the mass of block two, so we'll have 0.5 m2. We can plug in the final velocity of block three, which we found to be 7.11 meters per second. But let's not forget that the mass of block two was 0.5 m1. So we're gonna actually fill in 0.5 m1 in for m2. And since we don't know the actual value of m1, we're gonna to have to get this in terms of m1. 
So let's pick up our calculators and multiply this all out. Don't forget to square that velocity of block 3. And we end up with 6.32 times m1. And we need to compare this value to the initial kinetic energy of block 1. And so here is that setup. We can take 1 half times m1 times its initial velocity, which was 4, and square it. And when we do that, we're going to get 8 times m1. So actually, the kinetic energy initially for block 1 is greater than the value of the kinetic energy of block 3. So for the correct answer to part C, we can simply say that the kinetic energy of block 3 is less than the initial value for block 1. The momentum of block 3 will be its mass, which again is 0.5 times m2 times its velocity of 7.11. Since we want to compare it to block 1, let's replace m2 with 0.5 m1. And then we'll pick up our calculators and simplify this out. We get about 1.78 times m1. So that would be an expression for the momentum of block 3. And then for block 1, we would have its mass times its initial velocity, which is just 4. So basically it's just 4 m1. And we can see that the momentum of block 3 is less than the momentum of block number 1. So the correct answer to part D will also be less than.